Hey guys, and welcome or welcome back to my channel if you're new and if wait, what? Welcome back. Cut. <laughs> and welcome or welcome back to my channel so today i'm going to be doing a teacher frequently asked questions as well as like a quick story time of how i became a teacher at the young age of 22 without a degree in education the steps i took the tests i took and any questions that you guys had as well so last august in 2019 i became a middle school esl teacher for those that do not know esl just means english as a second language so what I do is I teach English to those whose first language is not English. So why I chose ESL, we'll get into all of that. Yes, I actually chose middle school. I know a lot of people are surprised by that. Like, why would you choose middle school? Some days I question myself, like, why did I do that? But yes, I chose middle school. I actually prefer middle school to elementary. And just being with my age, being so young, I didn't feel comfortable going straight into high school. I don't, I don't want to say I don't like younger kids, but my patience levels just works better with older students. So that's why I chose middle school and we'll get into all of that as well. So yeah, let's just go ahead. Okay. So actually let me take these glasses off. These are not prescription. They are just blue light glasses. So before I get into my frequently asked questions, I'm just going to quickly give you guys a rundown of how I became a teacher, why I chose middle school, why I chose ESL, all of that type of stuff. So backstory, I actually got my degree in psychology and counseling. My goal was to become a counselor and eventually be a psychology professor. That is what my ultimate goal was. I actually got a job in the field, entry level counseling job, so to say. So while I was on that job, to be quite honest, I realized how demanding the job was and how much the pay just wasn't adding up to the demand. Um, it was a lot of paperwork, a lot of going to see clients, just a lot of you know, being up and at them and whatnot, which I liked generally, but in that season of my life, it just wasn't the right timing for me. So I decided to quit that job and I actually became a substitute teacher. So I became a substitute teacher because, you know, you have a part-time schedule, you get to choose your hours, you get to say, I want to be off today. You have your summers off, even though if you're just a sub, like not a permanent sub, you're not going to get paid, you know? So yeah, I got hired to be a sub in January, 2019. And then I picked up my first shift, which was actually a middle school down the street from my house. I remember when I was picking the shift, I didn't want to pick it because I was like, I don't want to deal with middle school because middle school is one of those ages where they're hitting puberty. Peer pressure is just really real. They're just immature, but they want to be grown at the same time. So I didn't want to deal with that. When I was a sub, I actually wanted to do elementary school because in my head, they would be more respectful and they would listen and it would just be chiller. And plus, you know, elementary school, their days are shorter. They come to school at like 7.30, they leave at like 1.45. So I'll be able to get paid and go on my day, go to the gym, do what I had to do. So after I started the middle school down the street from my house, they actually asked me to stay permanently. And since it wasn't too bad and I kind of got comfortable there and being that it's 15 minutes down the street from my house, I said yes and I stayed. But I also wanted to test out elementary school just to get my foot in the door and see if it was something that I liked, you know? So one day I think I requested off at the middle school and I picked up an elementary school shift. So the thing about when you pick up shifts, you get to see the school name and you get to see the teacher name, but you don't necessarily get to see what grade. You will get to see the subject. I guess it really just depends on what county and what area you're in. So I picked up the shift in elementary school, didn't know what grade. I just saw, I didn't, I didn't even know what subject either. So I remember I came to the office of the elementary school and I was like, hey, you know, I'm here for a shift and whatnot. And they said, okay, let me lead you to Miss so-and-so's class. I get there guys and it was kindergartners. Backstory on me, I grew up as an only child so I don't have much experience with younger children. And just the way my personality is, is very blunt and straight up. So I was kind of like nervous when I seen that they were kindergartners because I just don't have that patient, you know, talking to little kids boop, 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 type of personality. I'm very just straight up. So I was definitely a little bit nervous when I saw kindergartners. And um, yeah, she left me in there alone with like 28 four and five year olds I don't know I don't even know how old kindergartners are mind you this is my first elementary school shift after I've been working in middle school for months right so when I say guys those middle schoolers tested my patients like they cried they begged they told on each other every two seconds like it was the most annoying thing I had ever dealt with in my life they asked to go to the bathroom every second they're talking about they need to throw up my stomach hurts and I just I'm just that's just not my type of thing if I'm gonna be quite honest with you guys so 
when I left that school, I intended to never come back again. They asked me, they're like, oh, can you come back? Teachers were asking me, can you cover for me? And I was like, oh, I'm busy. Literally, the whole school year, I'm busy. I did not want to go back at all. So I went back to my middle school, and then something just told me, okay, Mariah, if you ever do want to become a teacher, you know, you should still challenge yourself. And yes, it went bad, but maybe that was because it was kindergarten. So I decided to go ahead and sub elementary, but this time I contacted the teacher to ask them what grade they taught. So I ended up subbing for third and fourth grade, and it was better, but at the end of the day, I don't know, my heart just settled with those middle schoolers. Like while I was there, subbing elementary school, I actually missed my middle schoolers, you know? And that could be just because I gained a relationship with them being a permanent sub there. But at that moment, my heart just, you know, was just with middle school. I just liked my middle school the best. So after I left the elementary school, I ended up going to the middle school for the rest of the school year and didn't pick up any shifts. I stayed there as a permanent sub. So that's the backstory on how I ever even got my foot in the door to teaching. So in my county, they actually have a shortage of teachers because nobody wants to teach. Nobody wants to take care of these bad kids. Like, they're bad. So I guess what they were working out is that they would hire people who were not certified in teaching or did not have a degree in education as long as they signed a contract saying that they would work towards getting their degree. So for example, like with me, I have a degree in psychology, which is very close to a degree in education because a lot of the classes line up. So I would need maybe, you know, 20, 30 or 40 credits. So I would pretty much just sign saying, if I accept this job as a teacher, they would give me maybe three years to do 30 credits. They do help you with tuition and stuff like that as well. So my mom was telling me like, oh, why don't you apply to be a teacher, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, girl, I don't have my degree in teaching. And I just did not feel certified at all, but she really pushed me. So I ended up applying. And then they had like this big job fair where principals were on site. You would pretty much get, um, they pretty much check your college transcripts and see what you're eligible for. Are you eligible to teach math? Are you eligible to teach this? So when I went in, I knew that teaching middle school, of course, is a higher level than teaching elementary, but I knew that I just loved middle school. So I went in and I asked them, am I eligible to teach middle school? What will I be eligible to teach without taking a million credits because I don't want to be in school forever? So I asked for anything that had less than, I think, 30 credits in middle school. And she gave me a few options. So then, you know, I thought about which thing I was going to choose, whether I was going to choose English, science, social studies. And then my mom was telling me about ESL, which is English as a second language. I grew up as a, what do they call it, first generation immigrant. My parents are immigrants. I've been around many different languages all my life and, you know, I often have to translate and stuff like that. So she was telling me about ESL and I did some research and I actually found it really interesting and I kind of grew a passion for pursuing it. So I went to the next hiring event and pretty much, long story short, I got my um, conditional certification in teaching middle school ESL. So the next thing to do was to actually interview with different principals and schools and then get a position. So it was kind of difficult. I applied to several schools and elementary schools just kept reaching out to me like, oh, let's do ESL here in elementary. But I had already had my mind made up that I wanted to do middle. So last minute, someone in HR reached out to me and told me about this school that had an opening and it wasn't too far from my house and whatnot. So I searched up the school and I saw all bad reviews, like nothing good. They were like, the kids here are bad, disrespectful, always fights, the school sucks, blah, 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 blah. So I kind of was like, mm, but something in me was like, just go, just go. So I interviewed with the principal, the assistant principal, the other assistant principal, and I actually got offered the job on the spot and it felt right in my heart, so I took the job despite you know all the reviews that I saw and I'm so glad that I did. Um, mind you, this whole process of me applying and doing the, these job fairs and whatnot started in July and I got hired mid-August, literally about two weeks before school started. So literally as soon as I got hired, the next week I had training, which is like training for the whole county for new teachers. And then the week after that, it was training inside the specific school. So that is how I became a teacher. But what I forgot to say is that I actually took the praxis right when I started applying. My mom told me to just go ahead and take the praxis. So I took the praxis and I actually passed it my first try. I'm really good with writing and reading. So I like passed the writing and reading with like flying colors. And for math, I was literally two points away from not passing. Like I barely passed. Um, that's just because I've never really been good at math. But I mean, I passed enough, you know. And um... To me, the practice wasn't that difficult, but I feel like me being younger helped me because it was very similar to the SAT, in my opinion, and it's very similar to like gen ed college courses. It wasn't really difficult, but everyone has a different experience. I don't know, maybe I'm just lucky, I don't know. But really quick, I'm gonna answer any questions that you guys left. 
So one question I have is, how do you think you are financially as a teacher? How do you budget and save any financial goals? So me personally, um, okay, I will always be an advocate for teachers needing to be paid more because for all the work we do and all the BS we put up with, I definitely believe that teachers should definitely be paid more. Um, yeah, how do I budget and save? What I do is immediately as soon as I get my check, 40 or not 40, about 20% goes immediately to my savings where I cannot touch it. And then, of course, I pay my tithes, I pay my bills, and then from what's left over, I will, you know, budget and whatnot. I definitely need to do better in terms of saving, and I have it easy because I don't pay rent. I live with my mom. It's just me and her in a house, so it's just convenient for me not to move out yet because it's just us. Now, if I had a big family and siblings and stuff, I would probably live alone or at least get a roommate or something, but luckily for me, I don't have that situation, so I'm able to live at home and it still be quiet and just, you know, give my mom a little something, something. How did you become a teacher? Do you think you will stay in teaching? So I just told you guys how I became a teacher. The process, honestly, like, I feel like God really looked out for me, the process, um, because it was just very last minute. But um, do I think I'll stay in teaching? Probably not in the middle school age for long. By three years time, I'll decide if it's something that I want to do long term, but I don't see myself teaching for more than five years. So by the time I'm 27, I don't think I will still be teaching at least at a middle school level. I, I am starting grad school this summer. So um, my goal is to eventually get my PhD and become a psychology professor, but things can change. I'm the type of person where I could go literally in any direction, you know, because I just have a lot of interest and a lot of hobbies. So I just don't know where I would end up, but I definitely don't see myself teaching middle school that long, but I truly don't know. Next question, what is the easiest or most effective way to lesson plan? How do you work with the language barrier with your students? I work in a Title I school and majority of my students are Hispanic, so there is a language barrier between us. So I'm an ESL teacher, so we're expected to work with that language barrier. Um, there are many resources, like apps and things that I use in order to like talk with parents and stuff like that. But as for the students, being that I'm a middle school teacher, I feel like they really pick up on that social language pretty easy. I was studying Spanish from middle school to high school. So I am proficient, I guess. I'm able to hold a everyday conversation as long as it's not deep. Now the issue comes when I'm like giving them a lecture or trying to pop off on them because they don't really understand what I'm saying. And I feel like it's corny to like go off on Google Translate like I need y'all to listen and Google Translate and play that out loud. You just have to really show it with your face and your body language. But yeah, there's many different like um, apps and different technology platforms for translation and different language barriers. So um, do you have a mentor or someone who guides you as a new teacher? Yes, every new teacher in my county is giving a mentor. I actually was lucky enough to be very, very, very close to my mentor because she's the RELA specialist and I work under RELA. So I ended up really close to her and actually requested for her to be my mentor, which she did. Um, so yeah. Do you have to have frequent parent interaction with middle schoolers? I'm an elementary major, so I'm mentally preparing myself for that. So that is one thing that I also like about middle school as well, because with elementary, I feel like their parents want constant updates and stuff, which is absolutely fine. But for me, I'm just more easy maintenance. I don't really reach out to parents unless like their student is failing, there's like a disrespect or an emergency. With middle school, they're much more relaxed. But um, in terms of accountability, if their parents don't hold them accountable, then you're SOL. Like if they're, if they're acting up and their parents don't care or you can't reach their parents, then... You're just going to have to deal with, you, deal with it yourself. How is the pay? Do you think the pay is sufficient for your lifestyle? I'm a teacher too and I want to know your opinion. So for my lifestyle, it is sufficient. But I mean, I will always want more money, you know. And like I said, I do believe teachers should be paid more. Like I said, um, I'm lucky because I don't have my own place yet. But I'm saving up for that. And I am able to save a good amount. I'm able to have an emergency saving, a travel saving, and stuff like that. So I think it's really just budgeting and stuff but like I said it's different for me because I don't pay rent that's one huge responsibility that I don't have to deal with just yet I'm a first year teacher too and I really enjoy your videos oh, thank you can you further explain the modeling practice is it a club what does it entail so the modeling team is like an organization or a club our principal encourages us all to like start clubs and stuff just to keep the students active keep them after school and out the streets you know so I started a modeling club with another teacher and we just do modeling shows and practice and fashion shows and different events and stuff like that. And that's all it is. Um, I do get like a stipend, so like a little bit of extra pay for it, but it's really not anything drastic. How many years have you been teaching? 
Is that it? All right, guys, so I think I answered most of your frequently asked questions as well as how I got the job. I'm really upset that I didn't get to close out the school year, you know, like actually in school, you know, being that it was my first year and also being that I was really enjoying vlogging, doing the teaching vlogs, but I'm trying my best to do like virtual, you know, teaching vlogs or the online learning version. So let me know if you guys like those. And then also next month, since it's the end of the school year, I'll talk about my experience, my pros and cons. Of my first year teaching and stuff like that thumbs up if you enjoy this so i know to do more and thanks so much for watching don't forget to subscribe and i'll see you guys in my next video